All right, hey, welcome back to the Flipping Junkie Podcast. Danny Johnson, Flipping Junkie. I'm uh, headed back to the office. We've got some closings happening at 4 o'clock. And nice thing is when you're doing a lot of deals, the title company will come to you. So uh, I don't have to go to them. They come to our office. We get everything closed up. And uh, so it's very nice. But uh, I, I've got two things today I wanted to talk about basically really grind my gears so I don't know if you got anything that grinds your gears I'm sure you do but uh, two of them for me are uh, basically attorneys getting in the middle of a deal and then um, another one is, uh, is about lead propeller and the um, guy that wanted to to buy into it and partner up and buy into it and, and uh, ended up basically ripping it off, trying to rip it off. And so it's a funny story. I'll share that today too. But the first one is the, the attorney's getting in the middle. So basically we've got a, a deal and the husband uh, basically was, was going for it and uh, wanted to sell to us and everything. Well, he ended up taking the contract and, and going to his attorney and the attorney uh, basically told him to ask for all these things. And so basically, you know, when people have an attorney look over a contract, I have no problem with that, first of all. We always tell sellers, yeah, go ahead, you know, go, you know, you've got to be comfortable with it. You can't tell them to not have their attorney look it over. But, you know, I usually do preface it by saying, you know, when you, you pay an attorney to do that, they're, they're going to try to find things to say because they don't want to just tell you, well, there's nothing, this is fine. You know, you're paying them to to find a bunch of stuff. So what are they going to do? They're going you know, to nitpick and find a bunch of things. And so we've kind of had that happen on this one where uh, they ask for a lot more earnest money. And that's okay. I'm okay with doing a lot more earnest money. But then they, the attorney had told the seller to have us add a statement into the contract that says that it's basically just an intent to purchase and that until a real estate contract is signed, there's no valid agreement and it's null and void. And it's like, why the heck would we ever put that into a contract? It's basically saying that the contract's worthless and there's no reason to even have that document. It's just crazy to me. It's so stupid. And I don't really understand the thinking behind that. Now we do use a single page contract purchase agreement and we bought hundreds of houses with this. And so, you know, I'm, I'm assuming he's saying to, to use a TREC contract, um, which is the Texas Real Estate Commission uh, contract. And, um, you know, so what I've advised my acquisitions person to do is basically tell them, you know, tell the seller that we're happy to pay more earnest money. That's fine. But, you know, the other statements in here are basically negating the whole contract. And that's the contract that we use. We don't need, we're not agents. We're not real estate agents. We're investors. We buy houses. We're ready to buy your house. And close it quickly and solve your problem um, and we don't need a 10 page contract that's 10 pages because it's full of cover your butt stuff for realtors and so uh, you know we just tell them hey you know we're, we're happy to pay more earnest money it's great you know we want we will buy your house where we have a hundred percent close rate we buy all the houses that we put under contract and uh, if you want to move forward let's do that so um, I haven't heard back. I'm sure that they'll go ahead and take it, but, um, you know, just one of those things where you've got an attorney involved and there's a couple other nitpicky things that they wanted to add in. It's just stupid. It's, it's crazy. But, uh, so that's one thing. The second thing was, um, and I almost hesitated to even talk about this. And at first when I found out, I was pretty, pretty upset about it and wanted to, to, you know, charge full ahead and all kinds of, do all kinds of things. But, um, uh, if you can see in the video, this is my green smoothie. I got some banana bread. I love banana bread and my green smoothie. But anyway, um, so I was at a conference last week, and I get a, a, a Slack message from uh, my CTO for the software stuff, and he says, check out this website. They've completely ripped off Lead Propeller. And I'm thinking, oh, well, it's like maybe like a new competitor or something, right? Well, I go to this website. And he's not kidding. <laughs> like the whole sales page for Lead Propeller, it's the exact one 
with a different name and it's like they just started doing it so it's still like the exact they just copied all of the the, the uh, web uh, the HTML and everything and put up another website and then change the copyright at the bottom to be their their company name which is insane it's like completely ripping off copyrighted material and putting like their own company name on, and then changing it around and um, you know so at first I'm like whoa this is incredible somebody would do this and you know after thinking about it a little bit though the more and more I realized like there's like let this person and I know who it is by the way let this and I'm not going to mention who it is but let this person waste their money having a developer that doesn't know what he's doing take this stuff and try to build out their own thing and get nowhere with it let him spin his wheels and never amount to anything but a, a black hole he's been throwing money into and so that's the basically a strategy I'm gonna get I, you know I'm employing here and I'm also not gonna mention the website because I don't want a bunch of traffic being sent there and, and then having that sort of improve the rankings because a bunch of traffic is going but it's a complete ripoff and you know I've taken pictures of it and it's just incredible you know that somebody you know for me first of all it's like if you want to do like the same thing and you want to compete like where's the sense in hiring a developer out of India and saying hey copy this entire website the exact way it is and I'm assuming what they're going to do is maybe change it up a little bit but it's like you know if you don't even have the skills to create your own like how far are you going to be able to take that anyway besides the whole back end part of it it is not going to be able to be copyable so like good luck with that you probably haven't even thought that far ahead so it's just insane that somebody would actually take a complete freaking copy like literally they must have viewed source and scrolled and copied the whole thing and then pasted it into their own thing and then changed the copyright on the bottom and then the name of the website at the top and it's just freaking insane so I'm, I'm sort of enjoying watching like the fumblings of this and uh, you know even all the testimonials are the same it's just like, crazy and uh, and so you know where this stems from though is somebody wanting to, to buy into it and uh, uh, you know they had communicated with me before and the, the person had offered these things and, and you know saying that I'd be able to get this fancy car and all this kind of stuff and completely a, the type of person that I don't want to partner with like they don't even understand me and what drives me right and so I didn't entertain any of it uh, we know what we're doing we got our mission and we're playing the long game and, and this is the long game and we had something like we've been working on flipping houses for 14 years and in the software we've been working for at least what six years five six years uh, REI mobile and then lead propellers in the last uh, two or three years but um, and it's been the long game like we've learned so much from from putting this out there building it up putting it out there testing things doing things and for someone to think that they could just go in and copy the sales page and, and be able to set up something similar uh, from somebody in India you know to, to code this up for them that whose English is horrible because I've seen the changes the English is really bad um, and there's nothing against people from India I'm not, I'm not saying that but what I'm saying is like somebody Thinking that they could just quickly do that when, and, and have a success from it is insane. Uh, and really, the fact of the matter is, like everybody's got ideas. Um, so many people, so many thousands of investors have ideas to do things. And the reason why we don't see thousands of products out there or thousands of things about it is because it's all about execution and how difficult it is and how much work involved for the long term. It is to get even as far as we've got is it's just uh, a lot more than people realize I think and so to see this is kind of laughable but I wanted to share that out there with you guys I mean we, we've uh, we've got something that other people desire and everything and think that they can take a shortcut and do that and uh, it's just laughable so anyway well, there's a couple things that grind my gears but you know I've got my, my smoothie and my banana bread make it all, all better but uh, so that's that's that if you've got stories uh, about attorneys messing up deals or uh, people ripping off stuff of yours 
uh, share them in the comments. Um, you can go to the Flippy Junkie uh, blog to the podcast episode, share in the comments there, or just on YouTube, youtube.com slash flipping junkie uh, for this video, and then uh, leave in the comments. I'd like to, to hear what you guys have to say, but thanks a lot for, for listening, everybody, and be sure to subscribe on iTunes for the podcast and at flipping, uh, youtube.com slash flipping junkie uh, for the YouTube channel. All righty. Talk to you next time.